Welcome to the Javier Mendez podcast. We are back. And guess what? Umar has an opponent. Of course, we kind of announced it with a little short video. Um, nobody's heard of this guy. They had to go out of the league to find an opponent because people were not stepping up to take that one. But the newcomer that's going to be fighting <clears throat> Umar is Bezkat Almakan. Now, had you ever heard of this guy before this fight? Or you're like, who's this guy? Um, yeah, I've heard of him through UAE Warriors. Okay. Really, he fought in the UAE Warriors and uh, he's really tough. Guy's good everywhere. Good ground, good good stand-up, good game planning. I mean, uh, he's, he's a very formidable, uh, you know, challenge, you know. And uh, the only negative on him is he doesn't have USC experience, but he has a 17-1 record. Got good fight experience, you know, and uh, he looks good. He looks good. All the video I've seen of him, he looks very good, you know. Um, it's it's definitely, uh, uh, you know, someone that maybe not ranked, but it doesn't matter. We have to fight wherever they put in front of us. And Umar, you know, is not complaining. He has a fight, you know. It's like, you know, sure, we want a top five guy, but we, do, we want to fight more than anything. So he has a fight. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh... I saw some article, but it's it's just hard to get him a fight, right? Basically, you know. Um. Well, <clears throat> he, it's hard to get him a fight because he's so tough to deal with for him being where he's at. You know, if you're an up and coming guy, you know, like the guy that's taking the fight with him. I mean, it's not a good first uh, fight for them because, like, wow, we get this guy who everybody's predicting is going to be the next champ. You know, it's kind of like, you know, but you know, he may feel that he's the next champ, so. It, to beat the champ, the future champ, you got to beat the one everybody thinks is going to be the champ. So <clears throat> he's taking the chance, but most people won't. Uh, me personally, if I'm managing somebody, uh, then, then I have to fight Umar on my first UFC appearance. Man, I'd be like really, really thinking about that one. I'm not sure I would want that. You know, I might be advising my guy, let's not go that route just yet, you know. Unless I feel really comfortable with my guy, you know, then I would take it. So... They must be feeling really comfortable with their guy. And I've seen him. The guy's really good. So uh, there's obviously some good thing on what they feel that they have, you know, against Umar. You know, um, when they get in there with Umar, it'll be a different story. But right now, they're feeling that they can hang with him. And for me, I'm just grateful he has a fight. I mean, it's a, it's a, the guy looks like a stand up fighter. I saw him in a stand up war fighting in a, another Italian opponent who looked really game, <clears throat> athletic. So it should be an exciting fight to watch. You know? No, he's good every good everywhere he's got good takedowns good 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 top game no he's good everywhere this guy's well-rounded yeah he's not, not just a stand-up guy he's good on the ground too i mean isn't that the way of mma there's always somebody maybe we see everybody who's in the lineup but there's always somebody that we haven't heard of yet who's just a beast that they're like oh no when that guy gets here and you know this is this could be one of those type of people pretty much I yeah mean, that kind of record right yeah yeah yeah, it, it, his record says that he's somebody to watch out for. I mean, he actually has two more fights than we do. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So um, was it crazy for Super Bowl, being around Super Bowl's traffic and all that stuff since you guys were out there in the middle of Vegas and all that was going on? No, because I was never downtown. I never went downtown one time. So um, I saw the Super Bowl at, at the one casino that uh, that's, that's not even downtown either. It's, it's, it's a local casino and... Uh, you know, that, that wasn't even super packed. I mean, it was packed, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like traffic. It was no big deal. Traffic has been no no big deal, other than where I'm staying because they're doing road construction. So the road where I'm at, getting into my apartment is really difficult sometimes because the line is like like literally half a mile long. <laughs> you know, so that that's a pain in the butt. But other than that, it's, there's no traffic other than going to my apartment. Now, did you see the Joe Pfeiffer fight <clears throat> with uh, Jack Hermanson? No, no, I heard about it. I heard that the, the favorite guy lost and uh, the gritty veteran pulled it off in the later rounds, I guess, three, uh, three, four, and five, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. It was a very interesting fight because, I mean, the power. The, J Here's the thing. Jack Pfeiffer is uh, beat, beat uh, Nganu on the punching machine as far as the hardest hitter. That's like his numbers were higher, like he did it multiple wow. times. No, and nobody certified him yet, but they're like, we've seen him do it, but we haven't really officially, you know, uh, 
It's like the rankings. <laughs> it's kind of like the rankings sometimes, right? So right. you're questionable sometimes. But ultimately, um, you could just hear like, it might as well have been like a, one of those Kung Fu movies where the guy goes, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Every time he punches, there was that much force in his punches. I'm like, God, if one of those connects, you know, with Hermanson's head. But Hermanson kept his hands up really well. And uh, Hermanson waited till like the third round because he, I guess he figured the guy's cardio throwing so many heavy blows was going to take a toll. And I think that's what happened. Then he started implementing his game plan, more, more calf kick, busting up the dude's calf and going in with the jab. That's kind of like how he took over. Yeah, I didn't see any of that. Really it was, it was a good one. Um, are you going to go watch, are you going to go watch the Taporia fight in person? No, 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 it's in LA. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in LA. Oh, I thought that was—I thought it was in Vegas. My bad. No, it's in LA. If it was in—if it was here, yeah, 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 I'd like to see it in person. Yeah, definitely. That's it's a it's a great card, man. There's I like I don't even know anybody else other than the three main guys, and uh, you know, and I want to see that. I want to see Alex versus Illy, and then I want to see, um, you know, uh, Whitaker, you know, versus uh, uh, the what's his name. Um, the Brazilian guy, uh, Paulo, and then uh, Marab versus, uh, you know, Henry Segudo. That's going to be very, very interesting for me. I'm going to pull it up. We can go over some of these. I'll pull it up, put it on the screen here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Add to the scene. Um, we'll make it bigger. So, yeah, this is uh, – no, no, make this one the bigger one. Okay. I can still hear you on here. You can hear me, right? So we're looking at these these fights coming on. <clears throat> so Marab Davashili versus Henry Cejudo. What do you feel on that one? I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough call. I mean, Marab is is a beast. He's not going to run out of gas. Uh, Henry is a very smart fighter. Uh, he's actually changed camps to do this one. He's picking the right individuals that he feels are good for him to go into this fight. Uh, you know, so he's switching up his camp you know, as far as coaches and uh, who he's training with. Um, I don't know if that's the right approach, but it might be because he accepts it. So that being the case, it's probably the right approach for him because that's what he wants, you know, because if a fighter doesn't want it, you know, then what's the point of you saying, no, you can do it, you can do it. There's no point. The fighter has to want it and Henry wants to change. So it's probably good for him because he wants to change. But let's see if it works out. I, I don't know because Marab is... Uh, a handful to deal with any for anybody you know and, and uh, henry uh, you know he's gonna have to you know fight everywhere with him he can't just fight one way with him he's got to fight everywhere this is a fight that's going to go ground stand up back and forth the war nutrition you know who's going to have more gas in the later rounds uh, it's going to come to that i know marab i think we already know is probably going to be favored on on the cardio and that's his big thing i don't I, i'm not sure that i i know of anybody that's got better cardio than him uh, in the in the bantamweight division, I think he's probably king cardio. It's a good point, Hav. I think I'd have to give you the. I mean, Henry Cejudo, he's a stud, but he didn't show up in his last fight like he thought he would. <clears throat> so now we're like, hmm. Yeah, now you're up against a new talent. You're taking some time off. Hard waking up, ready to fight in silk sheets in the big, you know, villa. I don't know. I mean, that's the old saying. Then we got uh, Joff Neal versus Ian Gary. Gary's been. <clears throat> all over controversial stuff. I'm not going specifically into that, but him and a bunch of fighters have been beefing on social media. Um, yeah, and, and you know, uh, for me, it's like, hey, man, it's like, leave his private life alone. You know? Right. Like, why you, you know, it's like, why, why? Right, why right. Leave this private life alone. Pick on him as a fighter, whatever. Leave his wife alone. Leave his girlfriend alone. Leave his family alone, you know? I, I hate that about fighters. It's like, man, sh just leave it alone. Lowest common denominator people. Hey, let's pick on this. You know what I mean? He failed his third grade math test. Let's make fun I, of him. I understand that mentality. You know, it's like, you know, it's like be a real man. Fight the man. Talk about the man. <clears throat> Talk about his wife or his girlfriend. And leave him out of it. You know? They'll go for stuff to ridicule you. Like, ah, oh, we get a video. Your mom slipped walking out of Safeway with a bunch of groceries and fell on her head. That wasn't funny, but we're going to use it like that against you. This is where you're from, and they'll make a story. It's like horrible, you know, just just pile on like that, you know. 
I guess it's the extreme news cycle. It's like MMA has become fake news in its own way, you know? Um, so what do you think well, about it always, Go ahead. It, always has, it always has been fake news, but uh, that's a good fight. That's a good fight. And uh, Ian Gary, um, I'm curious to see how he does with all, all the hate coming his way, how he's going to handle it. Is he, you know, he's victorious. Is he going to go on the mic and, you know, just because he has a lot of hostility in him, I, I'm betting. I'm betting he does, and I'm betting he's going to let it out if he wins, you know, which he could definitely uh, – I would think he's favored to win, but no guarantee. Jeff Neal's no joke. Uh, but Ian Gary's on the rise, and he seems to have been destroying everybody in his path. So let's see what happens. But um, I'm imagining that after the fight, he's going to have some choice words for certain people. <laughs> yeah, or during the press conferences at least, right? Yeah, yeah, he's going to have choice words, and, and rightfully so, to be honest with you. Like, you know, if you're going to pick on him, pick on stuff that he does. Leave leave the other stuff alone. What about Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa? Man, that's a, that's a great fight. Uh, it's going to be an endurance-type scenario. Can, can, can Robert outlast him and wear him down with the speed factor, you know? Because it's the speed factor versus the brute factor, you know? They're both good everywhere, but um, can, can Robert you know, manage to uh, migrate the, the speed factor and use it to his advantage. If he can, he'll be victorious. If he can't, he's going to uh, he's going to probably lose a, a, you know, close fight. But it's going to be a close fight regardless, I feel. I feel anyways, because they're so well talented in, in every area. Both, both those guys are good everywhere. They're good mental, good physical, you know, good strikers, good ground guys. I, you know, um, you know, Robert's probably the better wrestler, uh, you know, but Paulo is no joke in, in, in any area, though. So, so you think Paulo's kind of bringing the the heavier of punches? I mean, you know, Whitaker yeah. throws pretty heavy hands too. No, I think Paulo's got the heavier punches. He's more the brute, you know, uh, uh, right? Or Whitaker's more the speedster, more the slice. Mm -hmm. You know, he's more the technician type. So that's where I think his advantage comes in, in that area if he can manage to to pull that off. We'll see. You know, we'll see. I'm definitely interested. I definitely want to see that fight for sure. Very. Yeah. And now we've got we've got a uh, great controversy. Well, not great controversy. I'll call it that. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Laya Tapuria. Tapuria is phenomenal, undefeated, coming in against Alexander, who wants to protect his crown. And basically, Tapuria has gone out and said, "Hey, I'm already there. I'm the king." He already put champion in his Instagram, and so Alexander's like, "I'm going to make you change that after I defeat you in the ring." What do you think about like? you know, visualizing uh, at an extreme, like talking it into existence. Well, you know, that, the, the secret. That's cool, that's cool stuff. See, that's fighter versus fighter. That you, you notice he's not saying about his wife and not saying about his girlfriend. I mean, they're keeping it to each other, you know, and, and that's cool. That's the way I think fighters should do it. Keep it within each other like that. That to me is respect, you know, that, that I respect that. You know, I respect that. That's the, so, that's the confidence. I mean, listen. We know Volkanovski is no joke. You know it personally. So, and then, you know, Tapuria is just like something, this this unstoppable object. So it seems coming out of nowhere, consistent, congruent with championship like pedigree coming towards the coming towards the throne. It's like the un unstoppable object, the immovable object. They collide. What do you think? How do you see that fight playing out? If you're just you're like your random generator on the technical side, Tapura technically because yeah. alex alex is is, is at least his, he's got holes in his game on a technical um so from that perspective that but from uh you know champion championship rounds alex all the way come on he's how many championship rounds did he has had a four-year reign where he was destroying everybody the only fight that he really had close was the first one with uh was uh with uh with uh, uh, what you call it, uh, the, uh, the Hawaiian, you know, Max Holloway, you know, the first fight, that's the one, the only one that he really had a, where I thought he might have lost, that was the only one. After that, he's destroyed everybody in the, mm -hmm. the feather that everybody's ever fought, he's destroyed. So he's on a tear and, uh, you know, his, his lone losses were to Islam both times and they were at 155 though. And, uh, you know, remember he loses to Islam, then he fights Yair and then he destroys Yair, you know, and, uh, and oh man, he's this guy. He's he's the greatest featherweight of all time for a reason. He's not over the hill. Um, the thing is, people are saying, well, after the the fight with Islam, after he took that kick, you know, I don't think that one kick is going to change 
who he is, you know, and uh, let's just see. I mean, you know, he's made a, <clears throat> he's made a comments about how he didn't take it as serious as he should have because he was drinking. Not that he wasn't training, but he was drinking and training. And obviously that does take a little bit off of you. It, does, it really does. You, you, you can't be at your ultimate best if you're drinking and training. You're just not. It's impossible. That doesn't mean you can't win fights and destroy people. It just means you're not at your ultimate best. And uh, maybe John for, Jones. yeah, maybe for fighting Islam, he needed to be at his best, and maybe that drinking caused it. Who knows? Hard to say. Hello, my friends. Bruce Lee here. I've got exciting news. The Last Disciple, my memoirs with Peter Chin, Kindle edition, is launching on February fifteenth, twenty twenty-four. Skip the paperback and grab the Kindle version at a special low price of $1.99. But it's for one day only. So don't miss out. For all my loyal fans around the world, this is something you will truly enjoy. Make sure to download the Kindle app if you don't have it. Sign up for the email newsletter to get exclusive news and order the limited edition of the paperback or hardcover at the website. And please visit Peter's website at www.peterchin.com. Enjoy. Bruce Lee out.